Well, every manifestation of the dangerous weather wreaking havoc around the world has one thing in common, water. As there's climate changes, the lack of water or its sudden abundance is reshaping the global economy and international trade. Think about it, from prolonged drought, slowing down ships in the Panama Canal, to deluges, halting industrial production in Japan, it's one of the most obvious ways that rising temperatures are affecting business. For more on what's going on and what companies are doing to try to alleviate it, we're joined by Susan Kennedy, the CEO of the Water Management and Agricultural Resources Company, Cadiz. She joins us from Los Angeles. Susan, um, people who are regular listeners of the program, they know I grew up in California. I wasn't allowed to play with water guns when I was a kid because we were living through a historic drought. But the idea of a water management firm, I think, would be foreign to a lot of people who are not from an area that has experienced major drought. So explain for people what exactly Cadiz does. Well, very nice to be here with you. Thanks for uh, thanks for the invite. You know, um, I've been in California for you know 50 years myself, and water is just something you don't think about. You turn on the faucet, and there it is. But in fact, it's you know the lifeblood of everything we do. Cadiz is one of the largest landowners in Southern California. We own 45,000 acres with water rights out in California's high desert. Cadiz Ranch has been farming out there for almost 40 years. We sit on top of this aquifer system that has more water in it than Lake Mead, the largest reservoir in the United States. And we've been developing these water assets for the last two decades. We've got water supply because we catch the water as it before it evaporates in the desert. We have water storage capacity. Uh, we have hundreds of miles of pipeline assets that we recently acquired. And we have a water treatment technology. So we're developing one of the largest new groundwater banks in the southwestern United States. And that's going to be absolutely critical for um, California in particular, but for the entire southwest in the coming uh, years. What is the biggest problem when it comes to water and water transportation that Cadiz is trying to solve? Well, I, you know, the, the biggest problem is water storage. We don't, we don't have a water scarcity problem. There, we, have enough, we have the same amount of water on the planet as we've had for four billion years. Water doesn't leave the planet. What we have is a problem with water infrastructure because you have to store fresh water in order to make it usable for human consumption, right? And our entire infrastructure system was developed around the snowpack. So that's where we store most of our water is in, the, is in the mountains as snow for many months out of the year. And then when it melts, it goes down into reservoirs that we've created right at the bottom of the rivers where we catch that water and store it for the rest of the summer. Then, but the problem is that where the climate has completely changed our ability to store water as snow. We're losing our snowpack. And that's happening in California. It's happening in the Rocky Mountains. So the major sources of water for the southwestern United States, which is a huge hot spot around the world when it comes to water access, is that we're, we're not able to store our water anymore. It's coming down in sheets as atmospheric rivers, and it's washing out to the ocean. So the biggest problem is storing water. And that's where Cadiz is... Uh, land has the ability to store, we have 30, 40, 50 million acre feet of water already in storage. And do you we have, have room? The ability but do you have room for more? Yeah, yeah but using with, con with technology to control the evaporation, we can actually import water and store it uh, through pipelines that we have connected to our property. So we can actually store a million acre feet of water uh, in, in our aquifer and hold it and there for years that uh, we needed for drought. Is that infrastructure already in place? I mean, when I was in middle school, the California State Water Project went through essentially my backyard. And this was like a huge, huge uh, undertaking. And back then they were, I don't know if these numbers were correct at the time, but everyone was quoting, this was a long time ago, a million dollars a mile. I mean, this was expensive back then. Like, you know, it's not like the subway here in New York, which is much more expensive than that. Five but million a mile now. How much is it now? Five million a mile. Yeah, so that kind of makes sense. That that kind of tracks here. Is that infrastructure, though, already in place, or does it need to be yeah. built? Well, he, here's where it, it gets interesting. What, so, um, th you know, the biggest problem with, with water storage, building water storage, is you have to get, you have to have the pipelines to move it hundreds of miles. And, you know, it's very, very challenging to build anything that, you know, hundreds of miles, especially in California. But we... Um, 
Cadiz is actually an old railroad stop between where it was built, uh, it was uh, around the railroads when they had steam engines. And so they used to stop at this little town called Cadiz and, uh, and, and get water for their steam engines. We, so we're sitting on a, a bunch of railroad lines and a bunch of gas lines. And so we, we purchased uh, idle gas pipelines that were built 35 years ago uh, that, that aren't in use today, and they cross hundreds of miles. So we can actually, we'll be the first in the world to convert gas pipelines to actually carry water and be able to transport water to all the major infrastructure in Southern California. Yeah, so I'm, so I'm wondering... Place. Yeah, Susan, I, I'm, I'm curious, um, you know, it's a publicly traded company. Cadiz has a market cap of about $150 million. It's a micro cap. Shares are down 20% this year. Um, what are investors, in your opinion, missing here? Well, you know, we're, we're in the utility space. Water is in the utility space, right? And so we've been, this project has been around for, for, for 20 years. And we've, we've been developing these assets, uh, you know, the pipeline assets and everything in the, in the most recent years. But investors don't really look at water as a, as a, as a place to invest, it, as a water industry, because it's usually done by public companies. And so, but everything changed in the last three years. And um, and now I think you're seeing some really creative public-private partnerships with technology companies and with companies like ours to help build the assets uh, and make them available for for communities. So I think right now we're sort of it, we're invisible to the to the market mm. for the most part. People aren't paying attention to us in the in the in the uh, utility space. But I think um, you know when you when you look at what's happening and the contracts that we've just recently entered into, you can see that this is going to be a massive project uh, and I think uh, should be very attractive to investors. Susan, what kind of regulatory hurdles are you facing right now? You know, um, 20 years ago, this uh, project was going to be purchased by the largest water agencies in, in Southern California to build a new storage bank. No one needed water 20 years ago, and nobody needed storage because they had Lake Mead. And so the project, any major infrastructure project, faces enormous environmental hurdles because nobody nobody wants to build projects like this. And so you know, it, it, it hit all the, uh, the barriers, and we went through decades of litigation over the permits and you know, came out of the, all of that with, our, with everything intact and ready to go. But um, we, we've sort of have the 20 years of, of, of regulatory hell behind us, if you will. Yeah. And so we're now, we're now in a place where we can actually start putting the pumping stations and, and, and infrastructure in place and start moving forward. Uh, Susan, you've been in uh, California for years, you're pretty much your, your whole career there. And you were in uh, the public sector for a long period of time. Um, you were chief of staff to Governor Schwarzenegger. You were cabinet secretary to Governor Gray Davis. I had a professor in college, this was not in California, who essentially told me that people aren't supposed to live in California. It doesn't have the, inf the, the water infrastructure and doesn't have the water availability. It doesn't have the environment for humans to, to be living there. What would you say to him? I'd say that civilizations around the entire world, uh, you know, developed around water resources, they, around rivers. And then the, 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 some of the aqueducts that we use today were designed by the Romans and the ancient Egyptians. I mean, we, we've been moved, humans have been moving water and storing water to create, you know, civilization for thousands of years. So it's uh, it's not about where we're supposed to live or not live. It's about whether or not we can we can you know sustainably develop the water resources in order to feed our communities and maintain the environment. Susan Kennedy, she is CEO of the Water Management and Agricultural Resources Company Cadiz, the publicly traded firm, got a market cap of about 150 million dollars. Joining us from Los Angeles, Susan, thanks so much for taking the time. Really, really appreciate it.